Hello everyone and welcome back to the Matt Vidpro AI YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you the absolute easiest way to create AI art or AI images on your machine at home. Completely free, your images are entirely private, not shared with anyone else, and the quality is mid-journey level. Very good. Now, I've done a similar tutorial in the past, but it wasn't as easy as this. I'm going to guide you through the whole thing and I guarantee by the end of this video you will have it installed. Now, if you're new to the channel and this works out for you, I highly suggest you subscribe. And if you've been watching the channel and haven't subscribed yet, please consider it. Let's jump right in. The application that we are going to be installing to create AI art is being updated over time to be compatible with more and more machines. The first thing we are going to do is check if our machine is compatible. This is very easy to do, but if it turns out your machine is not compatible yet, I suggest you watch through the tutorial anyways, because at the end of the video I'm going to talk about future expanded compatibility to different types of machines. This is not compatible with Mac yet. Like I said, I'm going to talk about Mac compatibility in the future. For now, this only works on Windows. Our next step here is going to be right-clicking on our taskbar. Just like this, it's going to bring up a little menu. Now in this menu, I'm going to want to go all the way down to the bottom where it says Task Manager. I'm going to go ahead and click that. Alternatively, you can press the Windows button up here and search for Task Manager. Towards the top of our Task Manager, there's a bunch of little tabs. We're going to want to click on the Performance tab. We'll scroll all the way down until we hopefully see the word GPU at the bottom. We're going to go ahead and click on it. If you don't see any kind of GPU, GPU or graphics interface listed, then you might not have a GPU at all. In this case, you're not going to be able to run the software. You need a GPU. Once we've clicked on that, as you can see, I have an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080. By the way, thank you NVIDIA for sending this out to me to make videos such as this possible. Towards the bottom, we can see something called dedicated GPU memory. This is the amount of memory that our GPU has to work with. This is separate from your hard drive or your system RAM. We need at least four gigabytes of GPU memory to be able to run this. So if it says at least four gigabytes over here, you're good to go. Now, at the time that I am making this video, NVIDIA GPUs are the only ones that are supported. If you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, it probably says AMD. AMD GPU support is coming in the near future, so if you're watching this farther in the future, I recommend you check the date. Your AMD GPU might in fact be supported. You should probably continue along with the tutorial anyways, because on the download page for the software, it's going to tell you whether or not AMD is compatible yet. Now, the next thing that you want to do is click the link in the description labeled software. It might look really complicated on this website, but we can ignore most of this. As we can see, there's an example of the incredible AI art we can actually generate with this, we're going to scroll down to where it says download. You can directly download Focus, which is what this software is called with this link right here. So we're going to click that. It will immediately start downloading it. I'm going to go ahead and move my head so you can see this right up here. As you can see, it's downloading this file. So I'm going to go ahead and click this little downloads button. And it's going to show me what I just downloaded. As you can see, the file is 1.9 gigabytes, so it might take a few minutes to download. I'm going to go ahead and press this button that says show in folder. This is going to open up to my downloads folder where Chrome has put the file. For now, I'm going to go ahead and minimize that Chrome window. As you can see, this file is not your average everyday folder. It's a 7-zip file. Now, if you don't already have 7-zip, you're going to have to install it, but thankfully it's super easy and quick. It's very useful software to have on your machine. Click the link labeled 7-zip in the video description. I have it set up so it takes you right to the download page, and you're going to want to go ahead and download 7-zip for Windows 64-bit version right at the top here. Just like before, our file will appear in recent downloads, but this time we can actually just click it right in the web browser. My desktop recorder cannot pick this up, so I'm going to have to show an example on screen, but it's going to have a message that's asking you if you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device. This might seem scary at first, but don't worry, this is very trusted software. You do not have to worry about it, just press yes close out the 7-zip download page. Now the 7-zip installer will appear and you're going to want to go ahead and click the install button. 
Now that it is installed, we can click close and we have 7-zip. Coming back to our downloads folder, we can see that focus installer can now be opened with 7-zip. We're going to do this by right clicking on it, going it down to open with, and then clicking 7-zip file manager. If you don't see it in here, you can click more apps and scroll down until you find it. We'll click OK. And now 7-Zip will open up that file. You can now close out of your downloads folder. Next up, we're going to right click on our desktop, go down to new and then create a new folder. Keep in mind, this is the folder you're going to go into every time you want to create new AI art. So I'm just going to name this AI art generator. Double click to open up this brand new folder. And now that I've got both of these side by side, I'm going to go ahead and select all three of these at once. So they're highlighted blue and just going to drag them right into that brand new folder we just made. It's going to extract and copy those files into this new folder. So now that we've done this, we can exit out of that. So the next thing we now want to do is click this run.bat file. We're going to double click it. This will start it up. It's going to open a command prompt. It looks a little bit scary, but don't worry. It's just installing things and getting everything ready for us. As you can see right now, we have a download running. This is first time only. It doesn't happen every time you run this. It has to download the AI models that are actually going to run on your your machine. So my internet's pretty quick. It downloads this fairly fast, but this might take a few minutes. Once those have finished downloading, you're going to see a new website window pop up. This is actually where you're going to generate your AI art. I know it looks like a website, but it's all hosted locally on your machine. No one is being sent your data at all. I can promise. As you can see, this little command prompt will still exist here. Don't close it out unless you want to close the whole app. Just minimize it for now. Obviously, down here, all the way at the bottom, it says type your prompt here. This is the words you're going to use to generate your AI art. We all know this. Say photo of an adorable kitten and press the generate generate button. It's then going to load your generations. It takes a little bit longer sometimes than normal websites because you're using a consumer grade GPU for home machines, not a server level AI processing chip. But you can see in real time, our AI image is in fact being generated. This is really cool stuff, actually shows you the whole process and everything. And this is how it works right off the bat. It does two images. Now, if you don't want to generate two images, you want to make 30 images or you only want to make one, you can definitely change that. And I'll tell you how to do that in a second. But for now, I want you guys to observe the quality of these generations all made on my computer at home for completely free. These are definitely mid journey level. They're photorealistic. You almost can't even tell that they're AI generated. This is due to a variety of reasons. First off, we're using Stable Diffusion XL, which is one of the latest and greatest amazing models for AI image generation. It's very powerful. It already competes with Midjourney right off the bat. Not only that, but this program we're using to generate has some built in optimizations and tweaks to make things look and work even better. So you get a fantastic experience right out of the box. We can even expand upon our prompt wearing a sombrero and you will see it can do that as well. It's a fantastic AI art generation model. Both cats wearing sombreros. So what if I want to download and keep these images? It looks like they're on a website. Well, they're actually stored on your local machine. If I minimize this window and go back to that original folder where we first ran the program with that run.bat and I click into the focus folder, you'll see a folder labeled outputs. This is where all of your AI images get stored. As you can see, going into that outputs folder, there's a folder for this specific date. And if I click in it, here is all of our images we created already saved right to your own machine in their full glory. So that's where they are stored up for you. I suggest while you're generating to just have a separate folder with your generations open at all times. So moving on, let's get into some more of the advanced settings that are provided with focus the program we are using if I go ahead and click the advanced button down here a whole slew of options is going to open up to the right so first thing is first we have our performance on either speed or quality of course judging by what you're doing you might want to change this I'll set it to quality just to see how much slower it truly is then we've got a bunch of different aspect ratios or resolutions to pick from that we might want to generate in let's select 1024 by 1024 a perfect square which is pretty standard for AI art generation. And then as I stated 
earlier, here's where you can change the number of images to generate for any given prompt. So yeah, let's go ahead and generate 10 images for our next one. This is something that you commonly would not do with a typical website based AI art generator that you'd have to pay for. Then we've also got negative prompts. So this would be anything you don't want to see in your image. Typically, you'd see something like messy, gross, deformed, malformed, ugly would appear down here in the prompt. And they've also got this random button selected down here. This is going to be where you can change your seed. So if I wanted to generate this exact image again with this same prompt, I could do so over and over again and get the same exact result with that seed being locked the same exact numbers. But if I click random, it's going to make a new random image every single time. So I highly suggest you just leave random on unless you know what you're doing. Now moving on to style. This is where you can select a ton. I mean, a plethora of different styles to mess with. Again, you're a little bit new to the AI art generation scene. I suggest just not messing with style yet. Once you get more comfortable with things and you learn a little bit more about the AI generation world, you can kind of mess around with these and see what you like the best. A quick example would be, oh, if I want to make only anime based generations, I could click this anime and it's going to give me anime only generations generations or cinematic or pixel art. And finally, we get into the advanced settings, and I really suggest you don't mess around with these at all unless you really know what you're doing. The great part is for you more advanced users, this is going to look really awesome. You can load up your own Loras on the side here and add weight to them, which is awesome. If you want to add more base models or different refiners, you can also do that up here. So this is a fully formed, fully fledged AI art generator all built into your machine with a one click install. It's amazing. And down here, you can also do sampling sharpness as an advanced setting. But yeah, this thing is going to be updated soon. It might look a little bit different from what I'm showing you here because you might be watching this in the future. But uh, yeah, this is a really great program and the advanced settings here are fantastic. I suggest just leaving the advanced settings on here. You want to learn to, to play around with this thing. You want to change resolution, image number, all that stuff. Also with this program, we can do input images. You can upload an image that you already have on your computer and you can either upscale it, meaning the resolution of the image will get bigger, or you can vary the image. So if you upload a photo of your dog, it might be the same dog breed, but he's going to be maybe a different color. His face is going to look a little different. And then they've also got in painting as well. So this means that I can upload an image and erase the eyes, let's say, and replace them with different looking eyes. Or I can upload a really close up photo of a face and expand it outwards. I'm trying to aim this towards beginners who maybe haven't heard of this stuff before. So if you're very deep into the AI art generation world, this is going to look like just awesome things that you already know about that you're excited to play with. All right. So I think that about covers it in terms of the utilization. Let's go ahead and see what this thing can do in comparison to mid journey. Just to show off to you guys, this thing is the cream of the crop when it comes to AI art generation. This right here is a really cool mid journey generation, this skull. And I'm going to go ahead and take the prompt here and toss it right into our generator. We don't have to pay for mid journey. We can make a very similar image right in here for free on our own machines privately. Again, we're going to do 10 variations of this. This is one of the advantages to generating on your own machine. And by the way, at any point when you're generating, you can click this big stop button and it will shut everything down. All right, so I am back after those generations and I think that we got some pretty decent results overall. Of course, every single AI art generator is going to be a little bit different. So these didn't really turn out as colorful as Midjourney's output was, but they're still extremely detailed as you can see and very much coherent and sharp. This was Midjourney's for reference, but if I wanted more color in my skull, I can just change the prompt and I don't have to worry about burning through any kinds of credits like Midjourney. I quite literally have infinite credits to play around with. I'll even go ahead and try a style in here. We'll go with enhance, hyper realism and surrealist. And actually, I'm going to remove all these negative prompts because it's a skull. It's supposed to be a little gross. And we are back. Check this out, guys. I do love that you have a really nice selector to see everything you just generated. You can click on everything, but really cool detailed skulls here. But let me tell you, it is difficult to beat completely free. And man, this I think it is mid journey level pretty much. It's so good. Here's another nice, really detailed mid journey generation. Checking out these generations, they all look pretty awesome 
very realistic. Everything is saved to that folder like I mentioned earlier. Very high detail, good looking gens, accurate reflections, the bubbles like we asked for in the prompts. Really can't go wrong. Mighty impressed. Okay, one last little trick I'm going to go ahead and teach you guys. Let's say that we wanted this in a higher resolution. If you guys remember, we got that upscaler built right in. So what I'll do is enable input image, go back to my file and drag in the generation of my choice right to the drop image here. And we'll say upscale 2x. Then click the generate button and you can see it begins to upscale that same exact generation to a higher resolution. And there we can see the resolution resolution has increased by two times super high res at this point and man you really can see some of those nice fine details with this really really impressive all running on your machine at home for completely free does not get much better than that let's go ahead and talk about future compatibility so on that main page we originally downloaded this software you can actually generate this with amd gpus right now using linux i don't have an amd gpu and i don't have linux so i can't provide a tutorial on this but if you have linux chances are you'll be able to figure out how to install this and run it with an amd gpu tested on a 6700 XT GPU. So yeah, for you advanced users, it is compatible with AMD GPUs on Linux, but compatibility for Mac users overall and Windows users with AMD GPUs is coming soon. And also, if you guys want to know why this software is so awesome and all the hidden little tricks that they do, I suggest you read these as well because they're pretty awesome. The creator of the software has done a lot of things to make this thing work really well, just like Midjourney does. And yeah, it's just great software. I'm so happy this exists. Easily the best at home version of Stable Diffusion or AI art generation I've ever seen. So if this tutorial helps you guys out, please consider subscribing and leave a like. I'll see you in the next video. Check out some of my other videos, by the way, and also check out my Discord server linked down in the description. It's a great AI community on there. See you in the next one.